I'm Jesse Burst. I'm the founder and the chief analyst at Smart Grid News. It's the Internet's oldest and largest smart grid site. I'll be your host today as we talk about integrating advanced metering infrastructure with outage management systems. Now, you'd think that would be a, a marriage made in heaven, but you know, ha having your smart meters tell your outage management service system when there's a problem, and it can be, uh, but the process of getting there can really be littered with a lot of landmines. And today, we're going to reveal the most dangerous of those issues, along with advice on how to avoid them. Now, I've been through this presentation in advance, and my suggestion is keep a pad of paper handy or open that note-taking app on your computer because you're going to get some very detailed ideas on what to look for, how to filter out the noise so your OMS can, and can get what it really needs to perform, and lots more tips and tricks. So uh, stay tuned. Here's the two gentlemen who are going to guide you through it all. I'll introduce them in more detail when it's their time to talk, but very quickly we're joined by Forrest Small from Bridge Energy Group as well as Ron John Raja from BC Hydro. So here's what you're going to walk away with today. First of all, you're going to get a, an overview about why bother to take this journey and where you're going to end up if it goes well. What kind of benefits will you receive? And then we're going to talk about some of the tactics you can employ to actually make this integration to, to avoid the pitfalls that we've been warning you about and details on what those pitfalls are. And then finally, a lesson learned. I, I like to think of this as what I wish I had known before I started. We're going to pass along those real-world lessons to you. Uh, so let's get started. Let me introduce uh, Forrest Small. He's the Vice President of Grid Optimization Strategy at Bridge Energy Group. And by the way, Bridge is one of the most progressive uh, consulting and systems integrations firms, so we're glad to have them along. Forrest himself is a recognized authority. He's got 23 years of experience in our industry. And Forrest, we're really looking forward to your remarks. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jesse. And thanks to all of you who've joined us for the webinar today. Really happy to be here and uh, share some of our ideas and some of the work that we've been doing with uh, BC Hydro. Before I get into the material, just a little bit about Bridge Energy Group. Uh, Bridge is a utility consulting and systems integration company. We're headquartered in Marlboro, Massachusetts, which is near Boston. We're over 100 people strong, and we serve the North American utility sector. We focus on improving utility operational performance, and in that way, creating a secure and reliable grid for utilities and their customers. What we find is that we bring expertise that spans utility business, OT, and IT, and that really helps utilities get a handle on realizing the operational value from the investments they're making in grid modernization like AMI and OMS, and, and that's really what we're going to be talking a lot about today. Today I want to talk about something that our team at Bridge calls outage and restoration management, or you might see it on these slides as ORM, so just a word of warning as you're looking at the slides. Our definition of this encompasses the full life cycle of what happens from the time that power goes out to the time that power is restored to customers. And this can be applicable for blue sky days or for major events that you might often associate with severe weather like hurricanes, tornadoes, or ice storms, for example. From a business perspective, we find that there's five key outcomes that most utilities we work with are looking for uh, that they want to achieve as they think about ORM. And I'm just going to step through these for you. First, it's knowing about outages before customers call. And today, this is most often addressed with smart metering and AMI, and that helps us with the outage and restoration notification. However, if you think about it, there will be a lot more ways down the road to apply other sensors and a lot of new communication technology to identify power outages more quickly and also more accurately. The second area is diagnosing and isolating outages that will let you impact fewer customers. Outage management systems are a primary tool for this today, along with SCADA. But increasingly, we're looking at advanced distribution management systems being implemented alongside distribution automation in the field. And this is giving us capabilities like fault location, isolation, and service restoration. And this is something that really promises to support a dramatic improvement in the isolation and reducing the impact of outages. The third area is dispatching the right crew to the right location 
with the right equipment to make the repair. And coordinating outage management systems with other technologies, they might be automatic vehicle location, work management systems, other mobile technologies. This is all creating a lot of leverage for utilities to reduce the time that it takes to get the lights back on. The fourth area is providing accurate ETRs, or estimated time to restoration. And this would be for all outages. In fact, if you really think about it, you could apply this to any of the outage information that's useful for customers. Recently, a colleague and I participated in a conference that dealt with engaging utility customers during difficult events. And throughout the conference, the utilities talked about how critical outage information was to customer satisfaction. And then, moreover, how important customer satisfaction was to their corporate strategy. J.D. Power was talking about the fact that while power quality and reliability are key drivers of overall customer satisfaction, the weakest area of performance was actually keeping the customers informed about the outages and obviously the progress that the utility is making in getting the lights back on. So our topic today is particularly useful in this area. At Bridge, we're finding that it will become more and more important to incorporate other kinds of information like weather, um, impact prediction, damage assessment, to feed business analytics, and that's the way we'll really produce the kind of useful information that you need. If you can do all these things well, achieving high customer satisfaction, fast restoration, and getting that restoration done at a sustainable cost should really follow naturally. Outage and restoration management is a particularly complex discipline inside the utility. And I think one reason for that is that it involves business processes that cut across the entire organization. So you have customer operations dealing with field operations, it's dealing with grid operations. You've even got asset management and engineering trying to deal with finance and accounting during a major restoration. You compound that with the fact that utilities are trying to leverage large-scale operations technology, such as AMI and SCADA. At the same time, they're leveraging enterprise IT and systems like CIS, GIS, and work management. So transforming the operational performance of the utility really requires an integrated approach and a plan that considers the business processes, the technology, and even realignment of the organization. And we find that utilities have been so focused on implementing new technology that they haven't been able to spend sufficient time on updating the business processes, never mind supporting the change management that's necessary to really take advantage of all the new capability that you bought with the new technology. This is actually something we focused on with BC Hydro as we helped them develop a technology solution for getting AMI integrated with the outage management system. As I mentioned earlier, we look at everything that happens from the time that the power goes out on the left-hand side of this diagram to the time that the lights come back on on the right-hand side of this diagram. In outage and restoration management, the key areas of operational performance that we're focused on are first, the time that it takes to restore power, and second, really reducing the cost of doing that restoration. So technology can provide the functionality that decreases the time and the associated cost of each of these steps, and they might be getting the first notification or figuring out what the cause was or making sure that the right crews are getting to the location, getting through the switching order and getting through the closeout. All of that needs to happen. The trick is the benefits to the utility and therefore the benefits to the customer only really come when the technology is applied with really targeted process changes. You want to think about how to work in a new way that saves time and reduces cost and then decide how the technology can help you do that. And Ranjan is going to talk a lot more about this when he gets into his part of the presentation. So speaking of the technology, there are numerous systems that are involved in helping utilities with each part of that process we just talked about. Today we're talking specifically about the integration of AMI data. And if you look up in the upper left-hand part of this diagram, you see outage notification and, and things related to AMI and IVR and web portals and all that stuff that tells the utility what's going on out on the network. When we were working on this with respect to the integration of AMI data, the key challenge was ensuring the accuracy and turning all of the data into actionable information 
from the outage messages that were coming in from millions of smart meters. Beyond that, there are a lot of other great opportunities to really create full outage management dashboards that combine, as I mentioned before, weather, damage, workforce information. But the trick is making it all work means that these systems are integrated to streamline the flow of data and then make it easier for the utility to use the data, turn it into information, and improve operational performance as a result. At the beginning, when I talked about the ORM vision, I said that it included achieving top performance in customer sat, restoration speed, and restoration cost. It's really important to recognize that each of these outcomes produces truly measurable benefits for the utilities and consequently for their customers. For those of you who are familiar, in the Smart Grid Investment Grant Program, the Department of Energy used the term impact metric to describe that measure by which a utility could tell how and to what extent new technology and process changes actually affect grid operations and performance. So in that way, we're talking about measuring a benefit. The resultant business case that every utility has to build actually depends on the mechanisms that exist for that utility to assign value to that benefit. In other words, how can you monetize the benefit? So for example, reducing the number of truck rolls or optimizing your resources better can be translated directly into a monetized business case benefit. Those are the easy ones to do. By contrast, the strength of the business case for improving reliability statistics or improving customer satisfaction is more difficult. This is where we can actually try to drive greater satisfaction for customers and greater reliability. The trick is figuring out between the utility and the regulator, how can we reach agreement on recognizing and paying for that improved performance? This is another important place where the metrics come in. This is something that a colleague of mine, David O'Brien, talks extensively about is he tries to help us understand how we're really going to move into the modern grid. What I want to stress here is that utilities need to get very specific about what kinds of improvements they want to make and then track the performance with metrics that align really meaningfully to those improvements. Recognize that an integrated program to improve outage and restoration management performance can focus on different areas over time. So the metrics that we come up with today may actually change and focus on different areas over time. At this point, I'd like to hand the presentation back to Jesse. Thank you so much, Forrest. Uh, this is Jesse Burst with uh, Smart Grid News. We just heard from Forrest Small of Bridge Energy with an overview of integrating AMI and OMS. Now, in a moment, we're going to turn to some tactics, and you're going to hear from BC Hydro about some real-world lessons learned. But first, we want to get to a few of your questions. 